Let me tell you a little bit about my professional life, which brought me to Japan, where I learned in the beginning that there is no right or wrong, and that actually relationships is very important in life. Um, and when I then later on went where I was responsible in the board of a listed company in Korea, I understood how constrained you are if you are trying to manage a listed company in this world and what that means and how limited this your freedom of decision. Later on, I, um, I became the CEO of Lycos in, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. And my HR person took me aside and said, Alfred, you are in America. And in America, you cannot talk about women. You cannot talk about social issues. You cannot talk about politics and uh, any critical issues. So I said, OK, what are the options? <laughs> and I said, sports and food <laughs> is the best topic you can talk about. So I tried to reduce myself, which was very hard on this few topics. Um, and I learned that this so-called free society there is not so free as it seems to be. And um, so I left America after a two or three year experience there, and I went to, uh, to Dublin, um, where I was responsible at Google for Benelux and Scandinavia, which brought me to Norway, which brought me to this place where we are today. And I fall in love with your country, or not all of your country, but some of you are here, <laughs> uh, all of this, you know, of Norway. And uh, that's why we are here. I became to know very good friends here, and, um, and which brought me more, even more often here. So that's why we are here today. Today I'm in Munich, uh, where I founded a not-for-profit association called Wisdom Together. And Wisdom Together is about to grow consciousness and compassion through leadership development, workshops, retreats, coachings around the world. Um, conscious leadership is about awareness and it's about understanding. So that is about yourself. But it's also about responsibility and it's about compassion. That means it's about others. So um, it's very important to understand who I am, then to go out and said, how can I bring that knowledge and that wisdom also to others, and how can I serve, and how can I help? And it's, I call it the inner and the interconnectedness. So once we have an understanding about the interconnectedness, we know that everything is connected to each other. We understand that every thought, every behavior, and every action has somewhere in this world, you know, a resonance. Something will happen. If we understand that on a deeper sense, on a deeper level, I think we become much more conscious, which means becoming more conscious, we can create a world which we really want. The whole world as we perceive it is a reflection of our inner self. I don't know whether you, you know that, but um, it's, are you, and it's hard for me as well in every moment of your life, are you aware about your inner self? Are you aware about your presence, your motivations, your intentions? Um, because, and every time I'm running into difficulties or a difficult relationship or, a, you know, there were a lot of, you know, setting up this kind of uh, conference here is certainly a project itself and it, uh, it helps you to develop your your inner strengths and you understand your inner weaknesses as well. But every time you do that and you reflect on yourself, it's an opportunity for you to develop. And once you do that with the intention and the understanding of the inter and inner connectedness, you create a better world. And I think this is where we are here for. So the important question is, are you just reacting in this world? Or are you the one who are acting in this world. 
And do you want to become an actor and not just a reactor? And I see that a lot of, you know, through this technology which we have and our mobile phones and I know working for Google, what will happen in the future through digitalization or what they think what will happen through digitalization in the future. I felt that it's so important to become connected with your inner self so that you're not becoming just a reacting to a machine or to an algorithm or to something else. And that's why we are here for. So, if we understand who we are, we will understand more about others and consciousness. Aeneas Nien once said, we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. So, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting um, um, statement, because if you really understand that, it's always about us. It's not only the perception, but it's also the creation is coming from ourselves and coming from us. So I would like to invite you to this journey, two-day journey to yourself, understanding your perceptions and maybe your blockages and whatever it is, um, meeting people and friends here and uh, coming together with a new kind of understanding how you would like to um, go out in this world and do something. Another reason why I came to Norway is your amazing, amazing nature. It's, um, what I heard, it's deeply rooted in the Norwegian soul. Are the Norwegians aware about this connection? Are you? Yeah? I, yeah. So, the question for me was, how can I observe, how do you bring this inner wisdom into your daily life? So, how do you do that? I know when I was working at Google, I had always the same question in July. Beginning of July, it was, Alfred, what is happening in Scandinavia? Um, I said, what do you mean? Nobody is on the phone or on his laptop. <laughs> I said, sure, they are in the summer houses. And they said, that's impossible. You know, you cannot spend four or six weeks in summer houses these days. I said, well, obviously it is. These countries are kind of successful. So why shouldn't we learn from them instead of trying to persuade them to do more on their computers? That would be, I think, <laughs> a, good, a good learning which we could bring to the world from here. So it's about listen closely from, from an inner and deeper form of communication without words. It's really about connecting with nature and understanding that nature is nothing outside, it's inside, it's we are nature, we are part of nature. So sometimes I hear this conversation in saying, we have to preserve and, uh, the, our nature. And I said, yeah, because it's part of us, we are nature. So if we understand that, we probably react differently to nature. So, um, David Rottenberg is a professor of music um, and philosophy at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. And he, um, he has a special interest in animal sounds and music and nature, and he will tell us more about this form of resonance and consciousness later on. So, another I call it opportunity to be discovered. Because I don't want to go into this, okay, this is bad in this world, and here is what we can do to make the world here better. I would say, okay, what are the opportunities? Because I think we are living in a wonderful world. There are a lot of beautiful options in front of us. And it's just about to take the right mindset and consciousness to create a world which we want. So the question for me to you is, where do you experience trust relationship and gratefulness in your company or in your relationship. Do you, do you have that? And, and this is, I think, important to reflect on yourself. And Robert Keegan wrote in his book, Immunity to Change, why we behave often against our own wishes and visions. And Michael de Wiebe, he will come and tell us later on more about consciousness and what it means for our daily life, for our society, and for our businesses.
John Dreber Knudsen, Lovelyn Real Brenner, and Ferrosa will share their personal and professional stories on how each of us can make a difference on a society and private level. We will learn about the importance of diversity, how investments can create trust and serve societies, and how each of us can make a difference in global operating systems and companies. Julia Kim will tell us about a large conglomerate in Thailand, um, the B. Grimm Corporation, who asked the DNH Center in Bhutan to help them bring compassion to their company. What a wonderful request. Let us be open for those ideas and inspiration and suspend our judgment so that for those examples can really, you know, can reach our inner self. I also want to invite you for a quiet mind so that, um, that we can plant the seeds for wisdom and intuition. If you are a quiet mind, you are open to get connected to your intuition and the intuition is the inner source of wisdom. So, what kind of world did we create? What kind of systems did we create? And um, how does this system influence our behaviors and our thoughts? You know, another little story from Google when I was there, um, these guys were talking about the moment of truth. I said, hmm, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, the moment of truth is when the customer, the consumer, is, does not know when he will purchase something, but we know that he will, and we're going to influence him or her at that moment. I said, hmm. That's an interesting definition for truth. I have another one. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I, don't think, I don't think we, sh we should go in this direction. I think, um, and I think we have the option to, to not to do that. I think we have the option to be become more conscious. If we become more aware and conscious about our inner self, we really understand when influence, when somebody wants to influence us. And we can be open and say, well, that's a good information, I want to take that. Or we can say, no, this is nothing for me. I would like to create something else. Let us travel a little bit further to the Himalaya. What can we learn from there? What can we learn from happiness and education? I'm very honored that the former education minister Takur Povdjel came so far to Norway to share with us his experience and his visions about future leadership and young people and education. And can we learn from our hidden experience and knowledge is sleeping in ourselves as well? <laughs> 